Picture this, a bionic hand that can move just like a real one and feels like a real one too. It might sound like the stuff of science fiction, but researchers at the University of Illinois are making this a reality. Our Abby Larico is with us in the studio this morning, and you've been covering the story for us today, Abby. Now, this could really change everything for amputees. Right, Anthony, we use our hands so much every day, and people who've lost them can get prosthetics, but they can't actually feel anything from them. Well, these developers at the U of I want to change that. It is medicine, but with an engineering touch. Because I break a lot of arms. Garrett Anderson oh might God. be the only man in Gifford with seven arms. I have one for my dirt bike, I have one for... Uh, when I golf. That's after the right arm he was born with was blown off by a roadside bomb in Iraq. You don't really realize you have something until it's gone. I was right-handed before and now I had to be left-handed. I like that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> now Anderson is lending a hand in this lab nestled in a basement at the University of Illinois where researchers are crafting prosthetic hands that are closer to the real thing. We want to empower people to be able to do all these functions that they were able to do before. Psionic is the name of the operation. Adil Akhtar is the brains of it. The vast majority of prosthetics out there, they basically are like tools um, rather than feeling like an actual part of their body. And we want to actually make these prosthetics feel like a natural extension of their, their body. To do that, they're making the prosthetics themselves feel. It's called sensory feedback. Using the same wiring connections that can help an amputee control the movement in his hand, this would allow him to also feel when he's touching something and the amount of pressure he's using. And when we get that pressure signal coming from that sensor, we can actually convert that into electrical impulses that are sent across the skin of the residual limb of the amputee. Um, all right, will you work? Awesome. So this is one of the many grips that this hand can do. Uh, here's a fine pinch that I can do. And with the sensory feedback that you can get from that finger, then you'll be able to actually feel the, the things that you're gripping as well. How does it feel to feel from a machine? I wondered the same thing. Tell me as soon as you start to feel it, okay? And it'll feel like a light tingling or vibration. Do you feel it getting stronger? Yes, definitely. It's like a gradual. Yeah, yeah. So let me know when, when, it's, when it's like strong and like really apparent and, and that'll be kind of your maximum. I think right now. Right now? Okay, yeah. great. Okay, so now you shouldn't feel anything at all, no. right? And you still don't feel anything at all? No. Right? And how about now? Yeah. And so go ahead and, and you can play around with that. So if I... Oh, that's wild. <laughs> See if you can detect light touches versus okay. strong touches. Yeah, so that's light. The more pressure? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's stronger. Yeah. And the difference in those touches really matters. When you can't tell how much force you're using, you can't distinguish between a gentle handshake and a crushing grip. When I first broke my, lost my arm, I was trying to replace my wife's windshield wiper blades in our car, and then I broke the windshield. If we just use our hands for everything in, in daily life, right? The loss of a hand is so debilitating to a lot of people. Especially in underdeveloped countries, where most of the world's amputees live. That's why Octar keeps the project cost efficient and repurposes existing technology. The sensors in the prosthetic fingertips are the same ones you find in a touchscreen cell phone. And it's widely available, and because it's so cheap, we can place it in um, many of our low-cost prosthetics that we're developing currently in the lab. Meaning the whole feedback system costs about $30. We're trying to target everyone around the world so that they can afford this um, technology. They both agree. That goal, and a life that feels a bit more like it used to, are in yeah, reach. So it really gives me hope, and I'm glad that they're actually doing this kind of work. Now, Psionic is taking the sensory feedback hands to Ecuador in just a few weeks. They work with amputees there through an organization also founded by a U of I alum. Eventually, they want to start working on other body part prosthetics, but since hands are so complicated, it will be easier once they've mastered those. Anthony, Cynthia? Wow, that's such a great story. Now, Abby, so many questions I have, but I really want to ask you, the technology would seem expensive, but in the story you mentioned, it's only about $30. Like, how is that even possible? Well, we kind of mentioned that the sensors that are in 
using those fingertips are very similar to the ones that we have in touchscreen cell phones, which are almost the norm at this point. So they can be mass produced. That's one of the major things. They're reusing the wiring. Um, they're not really adding a lot of equipment on there. And the other thing that I think is really cool about this whole project is that they're not doing it to make a profit. Psionic is a company, but they are crowdsourcing a lot of their research. So they're actually talking to a lot of other developers and scientists and sharing the ideas and the developments that they come up with so that they can work together with other scientists around the world to keep moving this project forward. Wow, such a thank you so much for that story, Abby. Great, thank you very much. I have yeah. so many more questions. So, I can, like. We can really sit here this all morning and talk about that. Okay, real quick, Abby, when you that must have felt so weird when you did the light pressure and then the the heavier pressure when you were using that sensor. Oh, definitely, it was. The thing is, you really could feel it. So I was touching it with the fingertip, you know, really lightly, and then it was just this very light tingling feeling, like right on my arm. So if I was, you know, if I had lost my arm from here down, those sensors would be connected to this part of my arm, and I could feel that it was just like a very light touch, kind of just like when you touch a paper or something like that. But when you squeeze something, it was a pressure that was transferred up your arm. So you could really, and it was instant too. It's not like it took a second for the signal to be delayed. It was very cool. When I, you could see on my face how surprised I was at how well it was working so quickly too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Very really. cool. Awesome. Great reporting, Abby. Thanks so much.